Hey everybody, I'm out fossil hunting in Princeton, BC. Um, I'm at one of my favorite fossil sites. It's quite large compared to a lot of them. Um, the shale here is Eocene in age, so that's around uh, 40 to 50 million years ago after the dinosaurs went extinct. And a lot of this area was covered in lakes, so uh, most of the deposits are um, uh, containing fish and also stuff around the lakes such as plants insects, and sometimes even traces of animals. Now, there's quite a lot of different layers to choose from at the site, um, some yielding more than others. Uh, this section here has more insects and plants, and this section tends to have more fish all around this ridge. And then higher up on the mountain, there's also different sites as well that contain very nice material. Um, a lot of it is easy to surface collect, like on this mound over here, the insects are just lying around along with the plants. You can do a little bit of digging on the outcrops there and there. Um, a few times people found some interesting stuff, such as uh, scorpion flies, I think. Someone found one there last time I was out. And um, you can also find various different large fish. I found one in this region, and some smaller ones down along this side and further up the hill as well. So let's get climbing and see if we can find anything. Okay. There's even fossils here in the parking lot area where everyone uh, can drive in and set up camp. Like I almost stepped on one over here. This is a piece of wood or branch. It's very detailed. The plant fossils here are very well preserved, um, some of which I bet you can even find uh, fossil, I mean, sorry, uh, preserved cells, which is quite nice. There's another place um, here in BC called the Maccabee Beds, and they've got similar, um, similar age rock with very beautiful and exquisite fossils, such as fish, plants, and um, I think other vertebrates and insects as well just like this site. This is almost comparable, but just not as much. So again, we'll be getting up there in a sec, just finding fossils all over the ground, holy cow. So those were some other specimens found along the parking lot area. So we're approaching the base of the site. It's very huge, and it takes at least five minutes to get to the top walk-in. Um, there's a lot of snow here. I couldn't actually get out to this fossil site. Personally, one of my favorites nearby, um, because there's a ton of snow. Just, you can see there's some leftover bits here and there, and even at the top, there's a lot. So you'll see there's various different colors of rock. There's red, white, and different shades of brown and gray as well. Um, I find a lot of the better specimens are in the white and the shades of brown. And there's some other interesting aspects about the fossil site here. There's a lot of um, black smudges in the rock. That's um, carbon impressions and leftover remnants of plants. But there are some better quality ones the further you go up. So let's continue on. There's also a lot of spiders here at the site. Spiders and flies. I think also some different types of crickets. Oh, he's coming towards me. Holy cow. Oh no. Yeah, so it's gotta be careful when lifting up sections of the the cliff face and the rocks just to make sure you're not spiders. Also good for gloves. Uh, the shale here is quite sharp. Um, I've already got a lot of cuts on my hand. I've been fossil hunting for a couple hours now. Um, there's also some safety concerns around that. Don't um uh, hunt at the bottom of the cliff face like uh, chiseling and knocking pieces off because it can collapse down. There's been a few miniature avalanches happening whenever I'm hunting. Oh, here. 
Here is one of the most common fossils at the site. It's a metasequoia, or I think, a, yeah, a sequoia. So Dawn Redwood, which is still around today. And uh, usually you can get complete specimens on larger pieces of uh, shale. They do come in different colors at the site um, due to different, uh, I guess, preservations. So sometimes they're white on dark shale, and sometimes they're brown or black on this lighter shale. I'm actually going to keep this specimen, it's quite nice. So let's continue on. There's another one. You gotta have a keen eye. A lot of the fossils here are small. So usually a good tactic when hunting is to just sit down in one area and just take a careful look around you at each piece of shale, flip it over. That's uh, the best. The first time I came here actually, I uh, used that tactic and found, I think, 20 insects in one hour. It was crazy. I think mostly March or mayflies. Um, there's also some damselflies and stuff. Um, another cool fossil or um, a trace fossil is ripple marks. So some of the shale actually have like the lake bed's ripple marks preserved, which is very cool and can make for a good display piece. Here's another right there. Very pointy metasequoia. You can see this is a little rock outcrop where people have been working, digging away at the side. Um, usually, it takes a while to find stuff when you're digging out parts of the hillside, but I find it quite easier and faster just to surface pick. The quality is very decent for being exposed to the sunlight and weather, which is pretty neat. Some other cool fossils to find at this site are uh, nuts, seeds, and cones. I found a few which I'll show as, as well as um, I think bowfin scales. So a large type of fish. I think it's a bony fish. And uh, their scales can be found in these sites around Princeton, I believe. So let's continue on. Here's a possible seed. They come in different uh, shapes and sizes. Some are a little bit more smooth. Some have uh, patterns and grooves to them. Um, I'm not sure what they are from. There's not a lot of websites stating the different fossils from these sites, which is kind of sad. Very beautiful surrounding area. White trees, mountains and hills. This is like a perfect place to camp as well. And again, I'm very glad that the snow's gone. Let's see, anything in the whiter shale? Here's an interesting fossil. So this guy is um, a frog hopper wing. So it's an insect with an interesting pattern. It's got this like white line going down the wing and it kind of gives off this stripey pattern. And uh, what's cool about the site is you can find complete insects as well as uh, plentiful wings and body sections. Um, I've never found the body of these guys, only the wings. I have about 50 of them actually. Um, different sizes and shapes. And this one's actually quite large. Um, whoop. So the white rock's pretty crumbly. There's a lot of it um, exposed up here in like chunks. It's kind of different from the shale where it forms in like kind of thicker clusters and the shale comes off in sheets. So it's a pretty cool specimen. I also found, uh, I think, an earwig fossil as well. Uh, last time I came, I found the, the butt end of it, but now I found the rest of the body. So I'll probably show that too at the end of the video. So here's a small seed. 
can see it has a very smooth texture to it. And uh, sometimes you can find very tiny ones um, all over the place, these little dots scattered within the shale. And uh, I think they're a type of seed that travels uh, by wind. They get blown across the, the lake beds and settle at the bottom. So there's quite a lot of the smaller seeds at this site. I'm not sure what tree they're from though. So yeah, they range in size from a pencil head to around the width of your thumb. So it's quite interesting the diversity in uh, plants, seeds, and cones. Outside. Okay, well, where else? Let's head further up and see if we can find anything. Legs, or at least any other part besides the um, frog hopper wing. So here we are nearing the cliff side, um, or the cliff face rather. This is the starting point. You can see all the different layers up there. And each layer represents um, a different point in time, like a different seasonal change or an event, like um, a flood, a disaster, a change in season, etc. And it brings in different sediments that pile up. Um, I'm guessing for all of you watching, you probably know a little bit about geology and and uh, how fossils are formed, but I'll just give like a brief rundown. When a plant or animal dies and sinks to the bottom of, say, the ocean, a swamp, a lake, and gets buried, over millions of years, more sediment pile on top of it, so sand, mud, dirt, and over time it gets so dense and heavy and it compresses down with all that weight and turns into rock. So uh, heat and weight condense sand, mud, silt, uh, dirt into stone, along with the animal's remains inside. So the fossil's lost most of its organic matter um, and has turned into uh, fossils. So each of these little pieces of shale uh, are part of history, which is really cool. And uh, if you're lucky, find a fossil on one. It tells a pretty cool story about the time. You can learn a lot about the seasons that uh, occur during these different layers by finding what's in them, like plants or certain insects that come out uh, during a certain month. And uh, there's some pretty cool instances where you can get a lot of different fossils in one layer due to a natural disaster event going on. So it's pretty neat what you can find in these different locations in Princeton. There's a little piece with some ripple marks on it. It's the bottom of the lake. It's pretty cool. I mean, all of this forms pretty much at the bottom of a, a lake, but it's cool when you get the, the ripple effects. And even better if you get some ripples with a plant or even fish. And the cliff kind of ends over here, extends out that way, and then drops off more towards where the insects are found, and then gets really tall at this point. And then slopes down over here. Um, I checked the other side of the hill up there, and there's not really any more outcrops of shale. It just kind of goes up to the top, and then on the other side, it, it's mostly trees dry grass and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of these trails like this one here I'm walking on are created by uh, animals like deer and um, I know there's also bears in the area so it's uh, another thing to be warned when fossil uh, hunting out here. So like bring an air horn or bear spray and typically they don't really come out especially if you're making a lot of noise. Um, I've only seen one once, I 
while fossil hunting, and that was uh, that was down in Washington in the states. I was at another Eocene-aged uh, fossil spot, which was just a small bear. Okay, I think this is the end. I'll just head back and then uh, show you guys some fossils that I found earlier in the day. Here's a cone I found further up the mountain. It's very um, black and cold. Uh, and here is a one of those white um, reverse metasequoia in the darker shale. It's pretty cool. It's got some orange on it as well. There's another white one in there too. There we go. Um, my other buckets. Yeah, I'll check my other buckets. I pulled out a majority of the better looking specimens to take a look at. Um, so we got an insect here, I think a march fly. Very beautifully preserved wings. Let's get some light on these actually. There we go. So you can see the wings are very detailed. And then we got some sequoia over here. Here is the earwig I was talking about. And then it's got its other half. Then I've also got sweet ferns. They're not actually ferns, they're um, kind of like a bush-like plant. I've got some leaves. Here's another insect. Some sticks. More metasequoia. I think this guy's a fish comprolite. There's a few different types at the site. Sometimes they get preserved in white. It's a larger leaf. I think that's another sweet fern. And uh, these, I believe, are both in scales, the large fish. And here's another metasequoia. So it's a pretty decent haul. Got a few specimens I can use for um, displays and prep some out. Um, thanks for watching, guys. And hopefully I'll be getting up to a few more fossil sites nearby and posting some videos. You can also do some uploads of just specimens in the collection. Um, might even remove some dialogue and just maybe try and edit music in the background as well. And I'll put information in the comment, or not comment, the description. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.